We see in Acts chapter 6, starting in verse 8, it says, Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people. Opposition arose, however, from members of the synagogue of the free, freemen, Jews of Cyrene, Alexandria, as well as the providence of Sicilia and Asia, who began to argue with Stephen. But they could not stand up against the wisdom the Spirit gave them as he spoke. Time after time after time in the book of Acts, you see that the largest work of the Holy Spirit is in the words that people speak. And so they can't stand up against the arguments that the Spirit of God was giving Stephen. Stephen was a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. We also know that the kingdom of God advances through people filled with the Holy Spirit. And Stephen's wisdom came from the Holy Spirit. God is driving the movement and God is driving Stephen in this moment. It goes on, verse 11. It says that they secretly persuaded some men to say, we have heard Stephen speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. So they stirred up the people and the elders and the teachers of the law. They seized Stephen, brought him before the Sanhedrin, produced false witnesses who testified. This fellow never stopped speaking against this holy place and against the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and, and change the customs Moses handed down to us. Then the high priest asked Stephen, are these charges true? So Stephen goes into a history lesson about the Jewish faith, starting with Abraham to Isaac to Jacob to the patriarchs to Joseph. And then he goes to Moses but our ancestors refused to obey Moses. Instead, they rejected him and in their hearts turned back to Egypt. And Stephen, unlike some of the sermons that we've heard given to the leadership, the religious leaders of the day, Stephen ends a different way. Through the Holy Spirit, this is what Stephen speaks to power in that moment. He says, you stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. Up to this point, there's been this, uh, the preaching kind of ended with this invitation Stephen goes a different direction. And when the members of the Sanhedrin hear this in verse 54, it says that they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus sitting at the right hand of God. And he said, look, I see heaven open up and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And at this, they covered their ears and they yelled at the top of their voices and they rushed at him, dragging him out of the city and they began to stone him. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. I want to point out four things that, re that, that track with the death of Jesus. They were both tried by the high priest. They were both accused of lies. They were ac accused of destroying the temple. And the fourth thing, they both pleaded with God to forgive their enemies. In the midst of being persecuted, in the midst of death, Jesus said, forgive them. They do not know what they're doing. And Stephen said, forgive them. See, following the will of God always includes suffering. James, who's the brother of Jesus, says this in James chapter 1. Starting in verse 2, he says, Consider pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. One of the key roads to maturity is suffering. The story of Stephen is a tragic story of a man who dies for his faith. But the story of Jesus doesn't stop with the death of Stephen. The death of Stephen moves the kingdom of God into the next stage of growth. It says, on that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. So what happened? They run. They decide to get out of their comfort zone because the Holy Spirit inspired Stephen to stand 
up in such a way that got him killed. And it caused such unrest and uncomfortableness within the church that they left. And what does it fulfill? The words that Jesus said. That you will take and be my witnesses in Jerusalem to Judea and Samaria. And so this is the beginning of that spreading out. I was getting ready for this message. I began to think about times that maybe we were in a comfortable state and then God has to step in and kind of move things along. And I look back to March 8th, 2020. In October of 2019, we were a church uh, that had a regular attendance of somewhere around 330 people. March 8th, we had 500, I think 520 people here. And we had just seen explosive growth from October to March. And then March 13th hit and everything stopped. But something changed, something happened. See, the church didn't stop. The church left the building because even though we couldn't gather, the church still functioned. And we had meeting after meeting with our staff about how do we, how do we make sure to keep people connected. And we weren't alone. The church all over the globe left the building. And I look back on that, and it was not a comfortable time. But it was a lesson, I think, for all of our staff of coming together of saying, I know that this isn't what we would prefer to be doing, but the church can't stop moving. And as I look at the beginning of this movement outside of Jerusalem in the book of Acts, they left because they were afraid. They left because they were terrified. But when they go, they're going to begin to see God showing up over and over and over again. That's my prayer this morning for you that the Holy Spirit will dwell in you and lead you and motivate you to speak the gospel of Jesus Christ, that you will tell people of the saving grace of Christ. That will be what the, what the Holy Spirit motivates you to do, that you will be a kingdom moving asset for God. Hey, thank you guys so much for checking out that video. If you want to see more from us, you can like and subscribe. We'll be posting more stuff every week. If you want to connect with us, you can check us out on our socials or on our website, marlboroughchristian.com, where we'll have more information about what we have coming up. Thank you guys again for checking out that video. We'll see you in the next one.